This week on Gadget, we're doing a little bit of math. 1 plus 1 equals 1. That's one go-anywhere-do-anything network. The SonicWall TZ190. Stay tuned. Hello, and welcome back to Gadget at thetechstop.net, where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Balasser of the Society of Jesus, that's the California province of the Jesuits, a religious order of the Catholic Church, and we're here again in the Center for Apostolic Technology in San Jose, California. Let's get on to the tech. Now, we've all seen this. If you watched episode 12, you know that this is the AirCard 595. It's used by Sprint's EVDO mobile broadband service. Quite a nice little product, but by itself, it could only equip one laptop or a PCMCIA equipped desktop with mobile broadband. Now, that's where this comes into play. This is the SonicWall TZ190. It's one of their firewall NAT routers, but it's oh so much more. Well, first of all, if you know SonicWall, you know that it's not a fly-by-night company. This is one of these companies that has constantly put out quality products, stuff used for the small business to the medium business to the enterprise market, really good security appliances and firewalls, routers, you name it. Now, it has all your standard complement of ports, everything from the 10-100 LAN ports in the back to the single WAN port, and even a console port so you can have that out-of-band serial management. It also has this OPT optional port, which is unique because it can double, or triple actually, as a ninth LAN port, or as a second WAN port so you can have failover or, uh, or, or bandwidth uh, uh, balancing, or it could be a DMZ, a demilitarized zone for your router so that you have a place where it will just dump uh, incoming traffic. Now, the really unique feature about this isn't all the standard sonic wall goodness or even the software that's built into this, which we'll show you in just a second, but it's the fact that it has this little service module, PCMCIA slot, where you could take one of these and do that. This turns this SonicWall TZ190 into a mobile office, essentially. Something that has constant broadband connectivity. I can now take this SonicWall, go out into the middle of a field, as long as I've got power, and something that power up my SonicWall and my laptop, or a group of laptops, and, and be able to connect to the internet. Not only that, it'll keep all my settings. It, it has built-in VPN, it has intrusion uh, detection and prevention, it has antivirus, it has anti-spam. It's, it's a nice unit to take on the go for a remote office or, or a mobile deployment or a temporary deployment. Not only that, but the built-in failover allows you to go back and forth between wired connections, wireless connections, depending on which ones are working and which ones are cheapest. It's, it's actually a, a really well put together system. So watch this video and you'll see all the features that the TZ190 can offer you for your mobile or small office deployment. The first thing that you see when you log into the TZ190 is the SonicWall security status screen. This lets you know how SonicWall is tracking the latest threats and protecting your network. The network interface screen allows you to configure your WAN and LAN settings as well as switching the optional port between a secondary WAN port, a ninth LAN port, or a DMZ port. You can also set the unit to use Ethernet only, load balanced Ethernet, Ethernet with a WAN backup, or WAN only. Speaking of the WAN, the TZ190 lets you control how the WAN is used down to the minute and kilobyte. You can enable the interface during only certain times of the day, set it to shut off once a certain data limit has been reached, and otherwise customize how the WAN capabilities are to be utilized by the network. The TZ190 can also drive SonicWall's SonicPoint wireless system. This gives you a convenient one-stop shop for network administration. The TZ190 supports a dazzling array of voice over IP, VPN, and advanced firewall options. 
The TZ-190 can also be configured to filter content, protect against spyware and viruses, enforce client security policies, as well as a dizzying array of security upgrades that can be added to the unit as needed. The UI is intuitive and responsive, and there are almost too many features that the administrator can enable. This definitely isn't a router for the inexperienced. The failover feature works seamlessly. We started a ping test with the WAN port plugged into our Comcast service, and then we yanked the power on the modem. After a very brief delay, dropping only a single packet, the TZ-190 switched over to the Sprint EVDO card, and we were back on the internet, albeit with a slightly higher ping time. One of my favorite features of the TZ-190 is the integrated packet capture tool. This full-feature software will capture, filter, and export as much or as little of the traffic that is passed through the unit as the administrator needs. So a few final thoughts about the SonicWall TZ-190. This is actually an exciting piece of gear. When I first heard about it, uh, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it because I really enjoyed using Sprint's mobile broadband service and, and I wanted something that could be used to, to take this service and, and distribute it to an entire network of computers. That being said, SonicWall isn't just a one-trick pony. This isn't just a, a, a gizmo or, a, or a, a gadget or, or just something that they've added on to give some spark to an old product. They've actually designed this pretty well. The code is now pretty solid, and it includes all of SonicWall's UTM Unified Threat Management features that you have come to expect from their products. Uh, this can truly protect you and at the same time deliver the performance that you want. The built-in VPN, all the services that it provides, the, 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 the nice way it handles VoIP traffic is, is all reason enough to buy one of these. And then once you, hand, you, you, you add in this failover capability, not just the two WAN ports, but also the wireless port, it just makes it a compelling solution if you are looking at something for disaster recovery or for a mobile office or for a remote office or for a temporary deployment. That being said, this go anywhere, do anything at any time does come with a few cons. First of all, there's no rack mount. Uh, I expect rack mount and all gear that, that is sort of higher end, small business to medium business. Now, the idea is this is supposed to be mobile, uh, but it would have been nice to at least put the, the mounts for rack mount ear so that you could turn this into something that's maybe in a mobile carry case, a mobile rack case, so that uh, it can be used for those temporary deployments. Secondly, the LAN ports are all 10100. Now, this normally works. It, it's actually quite good. It's fine. The performance is great. But it would have been nice to have at least one or two gigabit ports back there so that if you do use this for a mobile office, this could be the only switch you have. Right now, if you were going to have a, a couple of high-performance storage servers, you'd probably want an external switch with gigabit ports so that you could get that added throughput. Also, it uses a non-standard power connector, which I, I really don't understand. Uh, there's so many other ways to do this. If they had used a standard barrel connector, I could replace a 12-volt adapter or, or use one of the, the standard uh, uh, APC UPS connectors to get into this thing. But because they're using a non-standard adapter, if I blow up the adapter, if I break it, if I snap the cord, whatever, I'm going to have to wait for them to ship me another one before I can get my unit back up and running. The TZ-190 without the wireless sells for about 620 online. The TZ-190W with the wireless goes for about 820. That is in no way inexpensive. That being said, this does outperform all of the other solutions that, that do this, this WAN, a wireless WAN backup. So if you need performance, if you need reliability, if you need a solid failover option, there is no other choice than this. Otherwise, you're going to be forever tweaking and hacking and trying to fix things that are broken. Now, that's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. If you want to find out more about the TZ-190, you can go to www.thetechstop.net, click on the Gadget tab, and you'll be able to read our full review, uh, check out links to other reviews, and find places on the internet where you can go ahead and buy one of these units. If you want to send us an email message asking us a question about the TZ-190 or any of the other products we've had at Gadget, or if you want to suggest a product for a review, you can write us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Well, I've been your host, Father Robert Balliser of the Society of Jesus. This has been the Center for Apostolic Technology, and I'd like to send out a reminder that there's no Uber Geek without you. 
Take care.